Ghost Cult Magazine is joined by the hardest working drummer in showbiz, Josh Fries. How are you doing, man? Hey, 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 what's happening? I, I, I worked on that for a long time because I was thinking, like, who's the hardest? It used to say that about James Brown, right? The hardest working guy in show business. And, and I feel like you have the same arc, like you are always doing something. You know what? I've seemed to have kept busy for a long, long time. And so uh, I'm grateful for that. Sometimes I'll complain about it or bitch or moan here and there. But I think I, I like being a little bit frantic and a little bit stretched and uh, until I don't, <laughs> you know? Fair enough. Uh, obviously, we're, we're here talking about your new solo album, your first in quite a while, uh, Just yeah. a Minute, Volume One, coming out in a yes. few weeks on Loose Groove Records. Um, uh, it, it's been it's been a second since you were able to stop and make a solo project, but this has actually been over a year in the making. You spent the whole lockdown working on basically these jams. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was done in the beginning. Uh, just as a necessity to kind of stay sane and keep my head out of uh, the news, you know, what was happening aside from us being in a pandemic and everyone kind of spun out because of that. But politically, there was a lot of unrest and and George Floyd protests and rioting down the street from my house. And it's like, you know, there's a lot happening. And being a parent to four kids that are all at home, uh, having my schedule and my whole like kind of career kind of like evaporate, you know, temporarily was scary and weird and uh so yeah i kind of just went back there to start kind of writing songs just for the fun of it with no intention of ever releasing it kind of being too lazy to want to try and make a record you know or kind of like commit to making a record so i was just writing these songs kind of keeping them at one minute just to make fun little videos on my phone and put up on instagram and that was really it i gotta be honest you know it, it sounds like kind of a fun, cool story, but it really is true. I really had no plans on putting it out because, you know, the truth of the matter is, I mean, it's important for me to do it, you know, to write and record music as being just a creative person. But at the same time, I'm not kidding myself and thinking that I, I don't really make a living from making solo records, you know? I make very little, if not no money from making solo records. So I really did just do it out of, uh, at least in the beginning, the writing and recording was just to have fun and just to make wacky songs and put them up on Instagram. And one of my oldest friends is Stone Gossard from Pearl Jam, who has Loose Groove Records, which I didn't, you know, he had Loose Groove like 20 years ago, and then it kind of went away. And I wasn't even aware of the fact that he was kind of like doing a reboot to it. And uh, and he called me and said, hey, I've been seeing all these songs you've been posting and you want to make a record? And I was like, well, shit, I wasn't planning on it, but uh, you know, shit. I, I, all I have to do is kind of hand you over something that's basically done and sure, why not? You know? And so Stone and I are just doing it purely from a place of love and uh, really just for fun and the act of doing it, you know, uh, we both, there's very low pressure, you know what I mean? Uh, Stone made it clear that he wanted to make sure that everything that I did, I kind of was able to just do on my own. And he was like, you know, he's like, I can be an extra set of ears if you want my uh, opinion about something. Or if you're wondering, you know, hey, you know, these two or three songs, I'm not sure which one you like more. I'd run that stuff past him once in a while. But he was like, there was no, there was no uh, label telling me what to do or how to do it. He's like, dude, he goes, do exactly what you want to do. Whatever you want to do, I'll put out. And whatever artwork you want to do, I'll put out and just make sure it's just hundred percent you and exactly how you want to do it. And uh, that being said, I'm also not a perfectionist. And, you know, if you saw the way I recorded over here, people go, Oh my God, you, you can't do that. But uh, that's part of the fun. I'm so busy in the real professional world out there working with really serious musicians at really serious recording studios for records that, you know, there's a lot riding on them for people's livelihoods and stuff. And, Getting to do it this way is just such a uh, nice release for me, just uh, just emotionally or mentally, you know what I mean? I, I keep on saying things like creatively or artistically, but it's like, that's part of it. It's just like, you know, I uh, it's therapeutic for me to be able to go back there and dick around in my studio. You know, I, I love the process of writing and recording stuff, especially if I'm just doing it for the fuck of it. 
You know what I mean? And there's no pressure. That's really fun. You know, I was, I said this in an interview the other day, but it's just true. I used to always, I sometimes kind of like poke fun at uh, kind of generic hashtags that people like to use online. You know, you know, they put up a picture of them at the gym and they'll go, the journey is the destination, you know, or, you know, so blessed, you know, they're having a latte with a girlfriend outside some, you know, coffee shop. So blessed, you know, my God. So, you know, I always like to put up of like PF Chang's and write the journey is the destination and just dumb shit. Right. Um, but what I realize is there's truth to it in the way that one morning I'm like recording music back there and I'm going, I've got no, like sometimes in a long time ago, sometimes I write songs going, maybe I'll get this on the radio or maybe I'll get a band to cover this. Maybe I'll, I'm thinking like income, maybe down the road. Uh, having made enough records that don't really sell much, I just know that I'm doing it for, for me first and foremost, just the, 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 just like I said, going through the act of doing it. And what I realized one morning is while I'm recording songs back there, there was a song I was working on that was really ridiculous. And, uh, you know, just it, it was an absurd track and I was loving it. I was crap. I was kind of making myself laugh. I was going, God, this is so fucked. Right. And I thought maybe that's what they mean. The journey is the destination. Cause right now, like I was thinking, where do I want to, where do I want to go with this song? Well, I don't care if it ever comes out. I don't care if anyone hears it and I never expect to make a dime. So really all I'm doing it for is the enjoyment of doing it, which is right now, you know, and just being present in that. And, uh, it really took uh, Stone to just call me and he didn't have to twist my arm, you know, but also when he called and said, can I put out your record? I didn't go, oh, make a record. Yeah, maybe I should shop and try and get a record deal and get more money from somebody. I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. You want to put it out? Great. Like, you know, I didn't look any further than uh, my friend basically asking me if he could put it out. And, you know, even just with the artwork has been fun. You know, originally it was going to be one record with 40 60 second songs on it and so i was like well let's do a couple different records let's do like a little series you can do volume one and volume two and we'll have uh you know crazy artwork on both whatever you want to do we'll just have fun with it once again and so there's a second one that's going to be coming out not exactly sure i'm not going to wait a year but i'm also not going to put out a week after the first one probably maybe in i'm hoping like in january or something you know but uh I'm, I'm already like, you know, not only sick of the songs on this first one, but I'm already like wanting to make videos for the second record. There's a couple of really funny songs and cool songs on it. I'm going, oh man, I can't wait to make videos for those songs. I was like, oh shit, I got to wait. Not yet. You know, I got to wait a few more months. But, uh, and the whole minute thing is just like, it was really back to the no pressure thing. It was, it's so less daunting going into write a song when you go, I'm going to write a 60 second song. It's like, wow, that sounds easy. And, you know, and then it can turn into something really great, you know, just the process of doing it and going through the motions is just uh, a good exercise for me mentally and creatively. Right on. Almost back to your roots there with the Vandals to go very punk and just very immediate and no filler. And uh, yeah. I mean, like there's a bunch of these that I could have listened to, like a five minute version of, you know, Dwarves and Queens. I, I you know, some of these things, you know, heavy metal car collection, I could listen to over <laughs> and over because that's my vibe. But sure. like, yeah, I think there's a purity in like the literally 58, 59 seconds. And you put like a, maybe consciously or maybe the first few came out that way. And you were like, let's go with that. I mean, like, it sounds pretty yeah. not premeditated. I like the footloose and fancy free, especially as you've said, when you've done so many high stakes career making records for other bands, for yourself and your bands, like a lot of pressure. Right now, yeah. no pressure. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> it's just like being able to like take the gloves off and loosen your tie and just like, you know, fuck around <laughs> you know you know there's something really fun about that i really had a good time doing it especially when you couldn't really go anywhere and you couldn't really hang out with many people and so it was all of a sudden was like, and i always complain about never having the time to do what i just did which is just go you know like like you said there's songs in there that sound like real rock and roll songs or punk rock songs and there's other stuff that just sounds ridiculous and there's you know four or five songs in the album that don't have any drums or have drum machine you know, so it's definitely not a, I've never made a record that's really like showcasing like here's Josh Ray's the drummer. It's more like, yeah, the drums are just part of the song. It's more about the song and, and the overall uh, performance and the drums are just one piece of that, you know? Uh, and especially because some people are like, dude, you're going to put drum machine on a song? Like, 
isn't that like sacrilegious being a drummer? It's like, no, I think I'm a songwriter. And I kind of like, to me, there's certain things, there's a certain aesthetic, even when it's really uh, kind of uh, rigid and simple. There's drum machine things I like. I mean, there's early, like some of the early Ween albums and stuff where they'd use drum machine. And I'm a lifelong fan of Ween, but you know, it definitely, for better or worse, it's not even, it's neither. It's just, it, it changed and that's fine. But like when they started making records with a real drummer in a real studio, it became a little more serious. I mean, they still have funny ass songs and they're still great songs and great records, but there's something really kind of gritty and DIY about those first, I guess it's their first three records where most of it's just like crappy drum machine and a four track. And it sounds odd. There's a charm to it, you know? So, uh, you know, there's a song, I think, one of the last songs on the record is a song that I came up with the title. Sometimes I'll come up with the title that I like first. Like, like I liked uh, Heavy Metal Car Collection. You know, there's titles I'll come up and sometimes I'll go, God, if I flipped over an album, sometimes I'll look at titles before I've ever heard a note and if track six sticks out and go, oh my God, I want to hear that because that sounds ridiculous. Like, you know, Baby's First Beard or, you know, whatever. It's like, yeah, that sounds great. What is that about? But there's a track, I came up with the title and it's kind of, it's sort of a dig at John Mayer, um, even though I'm sure he's a fine guy. I've never met him. But uh, there's a song in the record called Your Body is a Nightmare. Yes, <laughs> I love it. So I went you know, like that was like the I went almost right to that track. Actually, <laughs> I normally don't do that. But like I was like, OK, I have to. For, I kind of thought that some of this record was like taking shots at people. I until I read the press Maybe. release. That talked about, yeah, I mean, you're entitled. You've been around a long yeah. time. You can take shots at people if you want to. I uh, I thought Heavy Metal Car Collection was about James Hetfield because his car collection is at the museum not too far from you. Uh, oh, I didn't in know Southern that. Cal. Yeah, his whole, he donated like his entire car collection, most of it, to the Peterson Auto Museum, I think it is. And uh, that'd, be great if his car, that'd, be, that'd be great if his car collection was three cars. <laughs> My car collection, <laughs> right. I got three of them. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I don't know. think it's like a Seinfeld or a Jay Leno, but it's he's got it's pretty impressive, actually. Uh, and it's stuff he worked on and collected and loved. And he's a car guy. But yeah, then I read the press release. It's like, no, it's about Vince Neil, which I thought also had like some, you know, funny stuff. The Margot and- Robbie song is great. I don't and then even the, know. Uh, I don't. I don't even know if 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 Vince Neil has a car collection. It's just like no. Uh, well, originally I came up with that title. Uh, I remember <clears throat> where I was. I was on tour with Sublime with Rom about seven <clears throat> eight years ago, and we were down in South America somewhere, and we were talking about something and talk about Vince Neil, and and someone said something about cars, and I said, yeah, that's gonna be my new band. My new band's name's gonna be Vince Neil's Car Collection, right? That's my side project, and and I kind of held on to that title, and to be honest, the music to that one there's probably two or three songs on this record and two or three songs on the next record that were originally the kind of Vandals demos that I was working on. Like I'd written the music and I was writing lyrics and, uh, and unfortunately the Vandals so far, I mean, we'll see, I've been wanting to make a Vandals record for a long time, but everyone's like, yeah, why? But I'm like, come on, let's just do it. We got, we all have home studios and shit. We wouldn't have to, we could do it for free and just do it for fun. But everyone kind of has jobs and families and mortgages and like, well, maybe. And we're all lazy. But anyway, so I would try and like kind of write a couple songs and get those guys kind of sparked a little bit. And one or two of them would be into it. And then there'd be one person that's, yeah, whatever. They'd kind of drop the ball. Then I'd go into it and then we'd forget all about it. But that Vince Neil's car collection was one I started working on. And actually the music, was something that I ended up just editing down to one minute, but originally I recorded that music as a Vandals demo and was working on different lyrics. And I ditched the lyrics and changed it to heavy metal car collection. There's another song on that album called Get Help. And that was also a Vandals demo. There was gonna be a full on Vandal song. It was a two and a half, three minute song. You know, it's about, you know, being out with a girl and, you know, getting in trouble and saying, stay right here, I'll run and get help. (laughs) You know, when you have an altercation with someone, you know, be back in five minutes. Uh, so that was just kind of a fun, stupid song. There's a couple songs on the next record that I think that are pretty funny that uh, were supposed to be Vandal songs, and maybe they will turn into Vandal songs. I don't know. But there's a song called uh, "There's a song called Suicidal Breakdown," that it's pretty rad, pretty rad punk rock song. It's really kind of shitty sounding in a cool way. Like I went back and listened to it and went, "Man, should I record these drums?" Like I don't think the kick drum mic was even on, like in record when I did this track. But the track sounds so good and kind of mushy and weird. Uh, the working title was called Suicidal Breakdown because it was this fast punk rock song. And then in the middle of it slows down 
do this down 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 and sound like fucking institutionalized or something right so as a working title i'm like i'm gonna call this one suicidal breakdown because it's got a breakdown in the middle like suicidal like your shirt you got a suicidal shirt on, right? i swear i didn't wear this shirt on purpose i just happened to go. pick up a clean shirt off the laundry bag and this is what Me i put too. on hey i got my halloween poodle shirt nice um, all right anyways uh yeah that was uh suicidal breakdown and then i went god i like the title suicidal breakdown so i ended up writing a song about a guy that's going to have a suicidal breakdown but he has a few other things he's got to finish up first so he'll kind of he'll get around to it eventually but he can't quite commit to doing it quite yet um and there's another song that joe escalante gave me a title for this is really ridiculous and some people might go wow what nerve he's got but that was part of the fun anyways is sometimes the vandals are trying to figure out things to write about right because we don't want to just write about oh she left me or oh the man's got me down you know i mean just the same bullshit that people write about right and so you know we try and think of weird topics to write about or diff different things and uh joe escalante told me he says hey he goes we should have a song the vandals should have a song called our famous drummer and 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 it should be called our famous drummer and Joe goes, but you should write it, Josh. You should write it as if we're writing it about you. Like what you think we'd write about. If we were going to write a song about you, you should do it. And so that started as like a, almost like a dare slash a task. Oh, okay, cool. Instead of me trying to figure out what am I going to write about today? Oh, I'm going to write a song about what would the Vandals have to say about me if they were going to write a song called Famous Drummer. So it's pretty funny. It's about them finding me at Disneyland and, and kidnapping me from Anaheim and, uh, saving me from a life of bad drum clinics and nam shows and <laughs> right on it's i endorse funny. this idea this sounds like a great idea it's, it's uh, pretty funny so yeah you know you just kind of jogged my mind about something else which is kind of like when you're in these big big bands uh and and offspring has a new record out and you know devo has made new music in the last many years but like you know people kind of the legacy bands let's call them people maybe don't want the new music i know some bands insist like, oh, I can't tour if I don't put out a new record. Obviously, Vandal still right. gets gigs and still just re didn't play that long ago. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like maybe the fans are a little more unforgiving than you would like them to be. So you could go be creative, but you don't have that problem as a solo artist. You can just do whatever. Well, yeah, because I really don't care. You know <laughs> what I mean? And I'm not going to be playing any shows to even give someone the option to go. I don't want to hear some new stuff because there's not going to be any shows we can hear any new stuff. It's just going to here's these albums. You can listen to them if you want. If you don't that's fine too. You know, just the, the sake of, like I said, going through the motion of doing it was therapeutic and fun for me. But, uh, you know, the, the funny thing about the Vandals and it always kind of, it kind of bums me out when I read it. And then it kind of makes me laugh too. Whenever someone like on Instagram or somewhere will write, come on, new album, what's going on? You know, some fan will say, when's the new music coming out? Their favorite thing to do, and they do it all the time. And I think it's funny, but then being the guy that really would like to make the thing is, real quick, segueing, or not segueing, but taking a little left turn. I like the idea of the Vandals making, if they could, and I think they could, making their kind of most punk rock and fucked up record that they've ever made now, where, you know, the youngest guy, I used to be 16 in the band, and now I'm almost 50, right? I like, you know, there's nothing I hate more than seeing bands put out records when they're older, and they just sound tired, or they sound overly produced i'm like let's make the raunchiest most fucked up record we could ever make you know right now while joe's turning 60 in a year and a half like let's really go for it and really make it crass and fucked up and they're like yeah 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 yeah, maybe you know but so that's what i would like to see happen that's my dream of the vandals um and i think the same you know fucking twenty thousand people will buy the record they would buy it whether it was good or not or shitty or not or it's sell out or not you know it doesn't really matter but their comment that always makes me laugh and also kind of bums me out is whenever someone goes, come on, when's new music coming out? Like Joe or Warren will comment and go, no new music, screw that. We're not making any new music. Ha, ha, ha. And like, it's like a fuck you, like to the fans, like, nope, sorry. And it's like, it's kind of funny because most bands are like, yeah, yeah, we're going to do it. Yeah, just hang in there next summer, you know? And they try and be kind of positive about it and give them, you know, a little bit of hope about it. But the Vandals are just like, no, I don't think so. No, no nothing new. And it's kind of like, fuck. And, but like I said, I think just because it'd be so easy if we really wanted to do it, it'd be easy and fun to do. Just uh, like I said, just for art's sake, none of us are getting rich being the Vandals and never will be. So let's, you know, but let's make another record. It's been a long time since we made a, a real record, which was in 2000, 2004. I think it was the yeah, last real Vandals album. 
Yeah. Oh, there's a potato say, chip. Yep. You know? Yep. Uh, else, you know, whatever. You, and in general, I hope it happens personally. I'd love to see it and, and hear it. And, uh, but in the meantime, you've been, you've been full up busy beside this record. You just did Aftershock with Offspring. I saw you with Devo in September in Hollywood, uh, Pasadena, Englewood, wherever it was. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. I was. I didn't even know where I was going. I didn't realize it was the the amphitheater in the football stadium. I was oh, like, oh, did you go to that gig? I was at that gig in L.A. Oh, for cool. The weekend. And um, I did not know. I did not realize it was in the football stadium. And I was like, I got dropped off, and I was like, oh shit, I got to run like four hundred yards in in five minutes. And I was like, I'm too old for this shit, but I I made it and uh, oh, shit. made it to my seat. It was great, and the show oh, was cool. great. And I know you guys had to cancel New York, and I know that's rebooked. So I'm hoping. Uh, that there will be more Devo shows in next year. If you guys are going to go out, I would love to see them go out like on a big, big U.S. tour. Yeah, yeah, I'm keeping my fingers crossed too. We'll see. I mean, those guys, you know, shit. I mean, Jerry's 73 or 74, Mark 71. It's like, you know, it's tough to get out there and go on tour. Now, that being said, they're they're all in pretty good shape still and, and have their wits about them and they're still you know, kind of like, you know, cynical, funny, weird, dude still they haven't lost their sense of humor that's for sure so you know we'll see but you know i'm, I'm always keeping my fingers crossed there's more devo stuff you know mark has such a lucrative career staying at home doing music for film mm. and he's got a family now it's it's tougher to get him out there on the road he's the one we really got to kind of push to go to the gigs you know right on that was also super entertaining and i think people don't realize how many like earworm great songs devo has more than just the oh, hits. Yeah. they have so many bangers i was like i know all these songs yeah i was not great? prepared for it yeah yeah isn't yeah. that cool yeah it's fun to see to go to a gig and realize that you know i remember another similar thing is when i played for i played drums for three years with weezer between like 2009 and 2012 and my brother came to a gig we were doing like in san diego or something my brother goes oh my god he goes i don't think i own any actual Weezer albums? He goes, but the show you just played, I think there was two songs I didn't know. Like, I knew every, I was like, oh yeah, this one. Oh yeah, this one. Oh yeah, this one. And, you know, I just started playing kind of part-time. We'll see what happens, but I'm just doing a couple gigs with the Offspring while they're trying to figure out their drummer situation. But I've been friends with them for 25 years. I've played on a lot of their records, but not until I kind of was rehearsing with them a couple months ago to do a few shows when I went, oh, my God, like, They've got a lot of hits over the they years. They have like 10 hit songs, like legit radio hits. songs. Yeah, full yeah, I mean, on like Ramones like, quality, catchy. And yeah. that's a natural. I think they were very big fans of Vandals for sure when they came. Oh, I love Smash. Smash is actually absolutely. one of my favorite punk records from that era, which is yeah. now like 30 years ago. Oh man, I feel old. But um, yeah, 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 <laughs> 30 yeah. years old. That record yeah. is 30, almost 30 years old. Um, you have Crazy. done so much stuff that I could go on and on with you about, but I don't want to take up all your time. But I do want to ask you about two things that I saved. Guns N' Roses just put out two singles that were reimaginings from the Chinese democracy days. And you were in the band for a few years. And I know your playing ended up not on the record, but you got writing credits for that record. I wonder if the, any of these two songs jog a memory for you, if you have heard them or you're aware of them. Uh, they should send you a check if you were responsible for them because they're pretty good. Absurd is one of them. The other one is Hard School, which is like a very rocking tune. You know what? Uh, can I hear? Is Absurd online if I wanted to go find it? Yeah, online? absolutely. Yeah, okay, sure. I got to go listen to it because it's funny. The The publishing company I'm with hit me up recently and said, hey, do you have any writing credit on these songs? And, you know, some of these songs that we were working on, I mean, I left Guns N' Roses 21 years ago. Uh, I was working with them in 98, 99. So some of the stuff, I mean, it's been so long, I can hardly remember, but I listened to Hard School. I went, okay, I put on Hard School to go, do I recognize this at all? Like, because there were four or five songs that I co-wrote that didn't end up on Chinese Democracy. They were pretty good songs. They were like in the, in the running, you know, for a while. And when I left, I was like, God, I wonder what songs they're going to finish. Like, because they worked on it for another two, three years after I left. And of course, Chinese Democracy ended up being like the title track to the record. But there was a few others that I remember Axel... They had working titles at the time, but you know, they weren't lyrics written to me yet, but I remember Axel liked a lot. Um, and so I went to listen to Hard School the other day and I went, I don't reckon, like I knew that if it was something I'd written, I'd probably, it would jar my memory and I go, that's, I remember that. And yes, I wrote that riff or I wrote that chorus or whatever. Hard School, it, unless they have, unless they have proof that I wrote something and they come 
banging on my door wanting to give me money, which is probably not going to be the case. I listened to it. And I went, nah, I don't think I had anything to do with it. I could have, but I don't think I did in the way that I'm not going to go try and chase down their attorney and tell them that I wrote something on it because I really don't think I did. But I should listen to Absurd because I haven't heard Absurd yet. Yeah, it's on Spotify. I think it was called Silkworms on the original demos that have been floating around the interwebs. And it was a pretty well-known song and people were like surprised that they regurgitated these tracks, but I like them and I'm excited for like them. They're going to come out like on an actual release. I think it's nice that they asked you actually, because they're GNR and they did, they do what they want to do. I think that's kind, well, kind of them. It actually wasn't Guns N' Roses that asked me. It was my publishing company that okay. called wind of it and said, hey, should we be tracking down some money for you? I was like, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think I wrote anything on that. So, Well, then you have good people working for you. That's a blow to this. Yeah. Um, of the many records you have made, Love Vandals, Perfect Circle, Nine Inch Nails, one of my favorite records of yours, and this is probably going to be my last question for you, is Suicidal Tendencies, Art of Rebellion from 92. I know it's nobody talks yeah. about it. I love that record. It is 30 years old next year. And I love that wow. record, especially the rhythm section, which ST has always been known for incredible bassists and drummers. And you and Trujillo are on that record. And you did Infectious Grooves, I think, at the same time. Yeah. And uh -huh. slayed it like back to back records. Yeah, man. Well, thank you, number one. Number two, <laughs> that record's special to me, The Art of Rebellion, because I was 18. And I did it, which trips me out that I'm younger than one of my sons at this point, who still seems like he's 12 to me. Um, I was 18 and it was the first time I got to like hire a drum tech in the studio. So I had an actual like professional company setting up my drums and we were in this bitch and I'd made some records before that, but it all was kind of kind of more rundown, uh, you know, kind of ragtag recording studios and that record we made this really nice studio up in hollywood i was like holy shit like it was funny that record had a really big budget and a lot of money behind it and hype because suicidal had been like on the underground scene for so long and been like slowly climbing and doing well right and in 92 that's right when, you know, like Nirvana was breaking and the Chili Peppers and Jane's Addiction and, you know, and so they were really kind of being kind of, uh, what's the word, like, like kind of uh, tailored and kind of uh, put together to have a big launch, you know, for that record to be really big. And I think, I think they were kind of bummed that it wasn't, they were expecting it to be even bigger than it was. And it did well for them, but uh but I just remember like a lot, like the guys that produced it were dudes that like produced like Rush and Queens Rock and shit, you know? And uh, they were cool. It was just such a different world for them, I think too, that, uh, but it was great. I mean, I, I, those guys were all great. Mike and Robert, and Rocky George, uh, Mike, Mike Clark the other guitarist. Mike's cool, you know? That was a lot of fun. It was exciting for me too, because, you know, Suicide, especially growing up in Southern California, like, already at that point they were a legendary group you know it's funny to me too sometimes i'll be walking like i'll be at the market or something i'll be at the grocery store with my kids uh waiting in line buying chicken dinosaurs and fruit roll-ups or something and wearing you know my plaid shirt and glasses i look like some just dorky dad and i'll see like some kid next to me you know with a suicidal shirt or like a jean jacket with seven million patches, but like a big giant suicidal patch. And I, I don't say anything, but I go, they would laugh at me if I said, hey, I, I used to play drums with those guys. They'd be like, yeah, sure, old man. Yeah, sure you did, dad. You know, right. it just makes me fun. It just cracks me up, you know. But and I, they're doing, I, yeah. Awesome. It's a, a great memory. I'm glad you shared it. Uh, yeah. You're not doing too bad these days with your buddy, Dave Lombardo. Um, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, yeah. Who you just yeah. saw, because I saw the Insta. And uh, yeah, man, that's a, a good memories for me. It's not the most punk or thrashy song, but I urge people to go check out Tap Into the Power from that record. It's funky and it's groovy, man. It's heavy. Yeah. And you know what I love? I got to tell you, because people always ask me, like, what are your favorite songs you played on? I've played on thousands of songs, but one of my favorite songs and one of the songs I really dig the drums and the music to is uh, uh, Gotta Kill Captain Stupid. Yes. The rad track and the drums, there's a couple of rad drum fills in it. It's just guitars gnarly. It's just a pretty rad, straightforward fucking suicidal song, you know? Awesome, man. Well, thanks for sharing that memory with me again. I could have, I literally could have picked anything. You have been on like more records than Tony Bennett somehow, 300 almost records. It's great. <laughs> it's insane. I don't know how you're standing, but um, like, 
It, it sounds exhausting, but thank yeah. you for all the music, man. Thank you for this uh, Just a Minute Volume 1 album. Looking forward yeah. to Volume 2. And uh, all the best success. Stay safe out there and uh, keep doing your thing. Thanks Sometime. a lot.